Yo, it's Bogue. Welcome back to Kerbal Complete and Kerbal Space Program. Today, we're doing a manned mission to the Halley's Comet analog in the Minor Planets expansion pack called 1P Gaito. So this is my booster stage with a fairing where my interplanetary stage is with a Comet Explorer pod on the end here, like you can see. Now, this interplanetary stage is powered by a magnetoplasma dynamic thruster from the Near Future Technologies mod, which runs on lithium gas and a nuclear generator for electricity from the Near Future Electric mod, which is also part of the Near Future Technologies suite of mods. But we just lifted off the launch pad and we're just breaking through the thicker part of the atmosphere through the cloud layers where we just detached our solid rocket boosters and now we're just working on getting our apoapsis out of the atmosphere where we can do a kick burn to circularize into orbit and continue our trajectory on to rendezvous with Halley's Comet or the Kerbal Analog is called 1P Gaito but I'll be calling it Halley's Comet or Halley's Comet I don't know I've never seen Halley's Comet in real life as far as I remember but it is probably the most famous comet known to most people on Earth. So it's gonna be a really cool destination for today's video that I think most people are gonna think is interesting. So we just popped open our fairing to reveal our interplanetary vehicle, and we turned on our nuclear generator and lit up that magnetoplasma dynamic thruster engine, which has that really like scarlet red uh, gas plume. And so it's an interesting type of engine we're, I'll just explain it while we're drifting out of Kerbin's sphere of influence, but it essentially is a giant electromagnet running engine that ionizes gas, or in this case, lithium gas, to, to create like a, uh, kind of like a really, really heavy um, duty ion engine, almost. That's kind of how it works in a nutshell. Um, but yeah, it has a pretty high efficiency, hence, where, how, how much delta V we can pack into such a small package. This thing has like upwards, I think I think it has around 10,000 10, meters per second of delta V, but we're really gonna be pushing this thing to its limits in this episode as Halley's Comet in KSP or 1P Gaito, as it's called in the Minor Planets expansion mod, has an orbit, apoapsis out well outside the orbit of Erlum from the Outer Planets mod, which is the Uranus analog of the Kerbal system. Not only that, but here we are at our apoapsis, we're going to have to completely reverse our speed because it orbits retrograde um, in this case. So the Minor Planets mod actually has two options for uh, the orbit. One is more realistic. Uh, like here, I believe you have to go into the settings and set the Gaito nerf setting to true. Otherwise, it'll put uh, 1P Gaito on a polar orbit, which is going to be a lot more difficult to reach, in my opinion. So I've turned it on. I believe this is the more correct kind of orbit, uh, if I can remember right, or at least that's what it said in the settings. And uh, yeah. We're going to have to expend a ton of fuel. Uh, it's really difficult to get an encounter with it. I ended up doing a really inefficient rendezvous just because the gravity is so low that its sphere of influence is only just a few tens of kilometers. So I'm going to do a huge radial burn that I've set up here to get those close encounter nodes right on top of each other um, and kind of force an encounter. It won't necessarily be an encounter. I don't think I'm going to be able to get a flyby through its sphere of influence just yet, but since it's so difficult to get an encounter with it, we're going to be treating it as if it's a docking maneuver type situation where we're going to get those close encounter nodes as close as possible, and then once we're on top of them, we can kill off all of our relative velocity and then burn towards the target. As long as we're fairly close, we should be able to repeat that process a few times and uh, end up in its sphere of influence nice and easy. But before then, I'm just seeing if I can trim my flyby without those nodes disappearing, but it's proving a little bit tricky. This mission gave me tons of grief and I was just done with it by the end of it. But 
we were able to make it to 1P Gaito or Haley's Comet in the end and we're just coming up on our first real close flyby here. So now that we're close to these flyby nodes, I've switched the nav ball relative to target, and this is a super painful burn for me. It's 2,000 meters per second just to kind of relatively match orbits with um, with Halley's Comet or 1P Gaito, and it's super inefficient what I'm doing, but it was the only way that I could figure out how to get a good encounter with this object as its sphere of influence is like 20 kilometers or less like it's and on this super eccentric orbit it's just super difficult to get an encounter but as we've killed off our relative speed and burned towards the target you can see that little speck to the to the left of that green orbital line that's actually it right there and we're just repeating that process, killing off our speed, and then burning towards the target. And you can see that we're slowly drifting together. And it is in sight. We can see a big icy rock in the distance with a halo of water vapor or some sort of outgassing from the comet. This would be like its comet tail that we see trailing behind the object, reflecting the sun's light in the sky when we see the comet pass by in real life. We've just kind of completed some capture burns to circularize around Halley's Comet here. We can now get ready to send our Comet Explorer pod down to the surface. Yeah, so this is the interior of my spacecraft, pretty small, but we've just entered the Comet Explorer pod here with the free IVA mod that allows us to explore and traverse around the interiors of a bunch of spacecraft parts. I really recommend it. And yeah, this is my Comet Explorer pod. It's kind of powered by these RCS engines here, and it's got a cool design. This is kind of my main focus of this video, actually, is building this little Comet Explorer pod here. Because this comet has almost no gravity, it's so small um, compared to the planets, we don't need any heavy-duty rocket engines to explore it. So all this little spacecraft needs to maneuver and get off the surface are these four RCS engines here running on monopropellant. All right, now I'm gonna to try to find a relatively flat spot to land. This thing is pretty irregular um, because of its small size. It doesn't have enough gravity to shape itself into a sphere. It's uh, one of the smallest objects in the Minor Planets Expansion mod. This looks like a pretty good spot, so I'll just use my RCS engines to put us down on the surface really softly. And we can get out and explore the surface, put boots on the ground on Halley's Comet for the first time. There you can see just how little gravity there is. I'm almost floating away, so we're using our jetpack to push us back down to the ground. And here we are on the surface of Halley's Comet. I gotta plant a flag. As per usual, this thing is super far away at the moment. We're well past the orbit of Joule and in the neighborhood of the Outer Planets, which is another awesome mod for KSP. Do some science real quick, see if this thing has any special science readouts. Looks like it just has the default science readouts, unfortunately, but that's okay. Still have some other stuff to explore. So I'll get back in the pod and I'll use this little exploration pod to fly around the comet and see some of the other sights of Halley's Comet from the surface. We gotta get back in our pilot's chair first and we'll lift off the surface nice and easy. And I think we'll go this direction and check out this really steep cliff that we passed on our way to our first landing spot. All right, we're at the edge of this giant cliff here. We can see through this really nifty window by our feet just how it drops off. So we'll rotate down and head down this cliff here. I think I'm going to shut up actually for the next few minutes and let you guys enjoy this nice little sightseeing trip around Halley's Comet in this exploration pod here. But yeah, I'll check back in with you guys in a few minutes.
All right, I think we've seen most of what there is to see on Haley's Comet. So I've just set the mothership back as my target and I'm just pointing straight at it on the nav ball actually. And uh, since it's su since this thing has such a low orbital velocity, I can just point towards it and it's uh, like basically stationary in orbit around Halley's Comet um, speed wise. So we'll catch up with it pretty easily. All right, we can see it now. It's just in the top left from my exploration pod there against the backdrop of space. It's that little white line there. We're pulling up on it at about 12 meters per second. And, uh, oh wait, we're actually coming in a little fast. Oh, yeah, so we, we hit it, but it's fine. Uh, we'll just kill off our speed and drift towards it. And we'll probably just do a quick space walk over back to the mothership as we won't be taking this little exploration pod thing back to Kerbin with us as it would just kind of be a bunch of dead weight. And it's got a ton of parts that I added on there uh, that make it kind of heavy just for the aesthetics of it all. But now that we're back in our mothership, I've let my magnetoplasma dynamic engine back up again and we're gonna leave Haley's Comet or 1P Gaito behind. And since we're so high up, getting an encounter with Kerbin's actually gonna be relatively easy we just got those nodes to show up and then we're doing a small radial burn till we can get those two on top of each other and that will be our encounter but first i want to uh burn back into a prograde orbit around the sun so that's going to be about a thousand meters per second of delta v now i made a little bit of a mistake here i wasn't sure if I have enough delta V back to make it back home, so I wanted to do a test run first. So I set infinite fuel on the cheats menu. So you might see that none of my fuel actually drains in this last little leg of the mission return to Kerbin, but I ended up spending less than a, than uh, I, I, have, I had 1600 meters per second left to get back home to Kerbin and I only spent about a thousand of that. So. At the end of the day, I was like, I don't want to film that again. So I just left it in. And uh, yeah, if you do the math, it all works out. Didn't technically cheat, but sometimes you got to, you know, not, not drive yourself insane and just finish the video. You know what I'm saying? So here we are back at Kerbin after like a hundred years in space. That was an absurdly long mission. Um, and we're going to be re-entering the atmosphere on the night side, unfortunately. And another little glitch that I had here, this mission's turning out to be a disaster, is for some reason all my ablator on my uh, heat shield is just mysteriously gone. Maybe my uh, radiators didn't radi radiate enough heat away from uh, the vehicle from the nuclear reactor, so it just burned off all the ablator. So as we're re-entering the atmosphere, I turned on uh, ignore the max temperature for parts, so that I guess I mean, it would it would have worked if that ablator glitch hadn't happened. And uh, another thing I had here is I forgot to put on any parachutes on the reentry pod. So what I'm doing is getting all my kerbals out and just jumping out of the pod by hand and uh, using their little parachute packs to get down to the surface safely. So this is the second kerbal that jumped out of the pod. This thing only had a crew of two. So we're just gonna get down to the surface really quickly and switch back to the other Kerbal in free fall, hopefully in time, and get them both down to the surface. All right, so we gotta kill off some speed, so I'm doing these little death spirals to kill off some of our speed here. But it looks like our first Kerbal's about to touch down safe and sound, and we switched over to our second Kerbal, which thankfully had its parachute open up and fly him down to the surface too. But that's gonna be about it for today's video, guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you wanna see more modded planet pack missions in KSP, but I'll see you guys in the next one.